I promise guys, this channel is not turning into a Fujifilm obsession. Although, if you want it to, I recently purchased the Fujifilm X100V and I am now a proud member of Cult Fujifilm and I'm not ashamed. Last episode I shared my thoughts after one week with the Fuji X100V and I had mentioned that I was curious to see how it holds up as a portrait camera and that's what I did this week. I had a little self-portrait photo shoot uh, here in my studio. Technically it's a basement but it's my office where I get all my work done and it also doubles as a photo vlogging studio. So here we are. But uh, yes, I did have a little photo shoot this week and you guys, I had so much fun. This is a little powerhouse, let me tell you. For this portrait shoot, I used my Godot SL60W, or as I lovingly call it, my SlickCW, uh, with a softbox. It's a giant, big, <laughs> newer softbox that I underestimated the actual size of because it is huge. It's very akin to the very popular and expensive Aperture 120D, but this is just as good and it does an excellent job, especially for my small space and budget. That is the only light that I used. Uh, for my backdrop, I used a very simple uh, gray textured backdrop that I purchased from Amazon, dirt cheap. So I will link to all of my equipment down below in case any of you are curious. Uh, but yes, very minimal, very budget friendly equipment if you are just dipping your toes into uh, photography or portraiture or any of this vlogging mayhem that uh, you know we're all doing here. And the star of the show is the Fujifilm X100V. Now this camera is very small, very lightweight and compact. It was created with the street photographer in mind or the travel photographer it has a fixed lens, a 23 millimeter, which on a cropped APS-C sensor, which this has, it equates to a 35 millimeter. So perfect, perfect focal length for portraits. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. Some people like a tighter shot, some people like a wider shot, whatever your jam is. For me, when it comes to portrait photography, I gravitate more towards a 50 or 85 millimeter, especially living in Brooklyn when I'm trying to get nice glamour shots of any uh, of my knitwear that I knit. Yes, I knit my sweater again. I like to shoot in daylight as much as possible and my backyard isn't the most attractive. So shooting with an 85 millimeter with an aperture wide open, I like to call it my cover up the crap background lens because it blurs out all the all the junk in the background not that I have junk in my backyard it's just it's not very pretty during the winter but when I do find myself in an environment where I want to show off that background uh, I don't have to necessarily clutch on a, a tight lens with a wide aperture a 35 millimeter is perfect for that. And generally when I shoot my self portraits, I use my Canon 60 Mark II, which is a full frame camera on the heavy side, uh, but I love the, the results that it produces. So when I do shoot self portraits with my Canon, I'm used to the flip out screen. This camera does not have that. <laughs> it has a tilty screen instead. So, you know, it comes out and tilts up and down. Um, so I had to find a workaround and that workaround was using my phone. So Fuji makes an app that allows you to connect your camera to your iPhone or smartphone. Once your camera and your phone are linked via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, uh, you can frame up via your phone and use the shutter button through the app. So uh, in hindsight, that is very, very handy. However, I was having issues. I don't know if it was my connection. Uh, I just found the connection to be very dodgy, hit or miss. And sometimes it took a while for my phone to connect to the camera. So that was a little annoying. And after I took one picture, in some cases, I had to wait a, a few moments before uh, my camera would allow me to take another. So that is one thing to keep in mind. If I decided that I was going to use this as my primary self-portrait camera, I would certainly invest in a shutter uh, clicker thingamajig. Uh, shutter, shutter remote, shutter remote, that's the word. They do make one. It's about, I want to say, $30 uh, US. So again, I will link to that below. While I don't plan on switching to this specific camera body for uh, self-portraits, it's nice to know that it is an option. Despite the shutter connectivity, it is a very, very capable portrait camera. I was very, very impressed. I should also mention that I used a Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter because again, the Fuji X100V allows you to screw on filters. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what a Black Pro Mist filter does, it's very, very, depending on the strength that you use, I used a 1 8 uh, and it just creates this very nice, uh, soft cinematic, Feel. Especially when it comes to digital photography, a black promise filter is really good at kind of giving 
your uh, digital photos or video a, a nice filmic illusion, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I, I threw that on for good measure and I was very, very happy with the way my photos came out. Um, I, I'm not gonna say that they're masterpieces, but uh, for a test, I think that they turned out really, really nice. And again, proving that this camera is very, very capable in that respect. As I mentioned last week, I rigged up my Lens Baby Omni filter system, uh, which is this interesting contraption over here. So uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of step up rings uh, stacked in the back so I could mount it onto the Fuji X100V. Again, this is by Lens Baby. Uh, it's a metal magnetic plate that goes over or around your camera's lens and it also has these little magnetic things right here that allows you to clip on these crystals and filters, they come off, and it's a very strong magnet too, but you can pop them around, move it around. Again, this works really great in bright sunshine because the, the crystals pick up on, on the sun and then creates these rainbowy reflections. Uh, it worked just as well inside, and dare I say, it was pretty addictive. I just got really into seeing how many crazy reflections I could make with this thing. And I don't know if you can tell, but my photography does err on the side of dark and moody and emotional. So, you know, if you are wondering what my photography style is, I, I guess that's the best way I can describe it. If you want to take your photography creativity to the next level, I cannot recommend the Lens Baby Omni Filter System more. Again, not sponsored, just a diehard fan. Uh, you can have so much fun with this, guys. Um, and again, there's the, the main uh, filter system that you get, and then they have two add-on packs. Um, I, I actually do have those because Black Friday rolled around and, and I treated myself so sue me. So that was a really fun experiment and I'm so happy that it turned out well. It's nice to know that in a pinch or a bind I can rely on this camera as a self-portrait or portrait camera. Uh, so you know hopefully that helps you guys out if you are wondering uh, aside from street photography or travel. So yes the answer is yes. Yes it can. That'll do it for me this week. Thank you so much as ever for hanging out with me. We are by the way well over a hundred <laughs> subscribers. Holy cow, you guys, that is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, this is only episode four, so that makes me so happy. If you are new here, welcome. Welcome to my little corner of the interwebs. If you're into that type of thing, uh, feel free to like and subscribe down below. I am shooting to put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week, uh, and I'm, I'm here for it, guys. If, if you're enjoying it, I'm having fun. <sighs> Let's do this. <laughs> so anyway, until the next video, bye.